going to let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Put your hands together and thank God for the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for the wonderful testimonies. No symptoms, no traces, no traits. And stay focused on the mission and not the condition. It is only after you have suffered a while. You determine the why. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time together as your people in a house of worship and house of prayer as the fellowship the assembly of the blood bought word washed body of the Lord Jesus Christ living in a world where the multiplication of wickedness causes the love of many to wax cold We ask you for a special word of wisdom. How to continue living this life as overcomers. Victorious. Triumphant. In the face of every odd and every obstacle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As beacons of light as seasons of salt in the earth we glorify you nobody can see you but they see us what we do and what we say and how we respond and we become your righteousness your righteous actions your righteous deeds your righteous demonstration through Jesus Christ now we ask you for a special word of wisdom because you've already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places as long as we can comprehend what it really means to be found in Christ Jesus Peter says, you have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Only through the knowledge that we have about Jesus Christ. And who we say he is to us. You said, for as many as are led by the spirit, which is as if it is the spirit of God. Who said, if my people will humble themselves and pray. And if they would just seek my face, if they would just turn from their wicked ways and realize that they are the righteousness of God and the righteousness, the righteous acts and the righteous deeds of the righteous shall be upon him, his own head. Just as the wickedness of the wicked is on their own heads. Thank you that you have declared to us that we are your righteous acts in the earth. You don't have any hands. You don't have any feet. You don't have a voice except you use ours. And it is required in stewards that we be found faithful. Thank you for these testimonies. Thank you that everything we do is an act of righteousness for a God who is righteous himself. And because you've already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. With the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. The gifts of discernment. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. All of these things you have blessed us. You've even given us assurance that. 
we can tread on all serpents and scorpions and over all of the power that the devil would ever try to throw at us. And you give us assurance that nothing, nothing, nothing by any means would even hurt us. You told us this book of the law shall not depart of our mouths. Well, you go on and meditate on it. Turn it over in our mouths and in our minds. Day and night. But then we would have good success. Not you're going to give it to us. We'd have it. And then you assure us and encourage us to be strong and of a good courage. Lord, we ask you to give us the wisdom to put all this together that you've already done for us. And make it work for us. For you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think. But it's on this condition. It's according to the power that's working in us. How much of what you have told, given us have we actually put to work in us? And, that, and it's through these things you will and to do of your good pleasure. Thank you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. I heard this phrase, word, sentence, thought, idea. I kind of learned one thing, uh, I hear a whole lot of bad teaching from people, but I heard this one thing years ago from a minister who said, you don't, he, whenever he's going to preach, he would just basically ask the Lord to put in his heart, this on Friday, Thursday, Friday, whenever, just put in my heart what you want the people to have. Put in my heart what you want them people to have. That's why some of y'all think I know what you're doing. I don't know what. <laughs> Put in my heart what you want the people to have and just go on to sleep. So that's what I've been doing for many years now. I don't worry about what I'm going to preach. I still, I stop using titles. So I look for a word, a thought, an idea, something to come to me. It just, and this is what I heard. The compassionate love of God in Christ Jesus. This is Resurrection Day. The compassionate love of God in Christ Jesus. The compassionate love of God in Christ Jesus. So that's what I want to talk to you about. The... Compassionate love. Compassionate love versus passionate love. Now all of us, most of us, all of you know what passionate love is. So I don't have to go there today. Am I right? Well, we'll find out. But compassionate love, right, you can write this down. I'm going to just take my time and we're going to talk this morning and and the Lord is going to talk to you as if, you as if you're hearing all the way from heaven. It's, it's empathetic. If it's compassionate love, it's empathetic. That is, when you empathize with somebody, you're able to understand and share feelings of another person. You can almost feel another person. When you're speaking, I can tell when you're connecting with me and I'm connecting with you because I can just feel it. I know when there's a wall up in here. Uh, anything, you can just tell that when they ain't getting it, they ain't connecting. It's, it's just you understand that, but it's empathetic. Also, it's number two. It's forgiving. It forgives, and it involves forgiveness, but it's forgiving. That means it stops. It stops feeling angry and resentful towards somebody for an offense that they have done, or a flaw that they have or a mistake that they make. It's forgiving. It stops feeling angry. Repeat after me. Stops feeling angry and resentful 
towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake. You know, we can really hang ourselves up, and I have down through the years. I think I thank God for living long enough. I done put that behind me. And then the devil tried to throw something in front of you so he can see if you're going to bite on it. Because many of us go fishing. Number three, it's alt altruistic. A-L-T-R-U-I-S-T-I-C. -I -I it's altruistic. Altruistic just literally means it shows a disinterested, selfless, unselfish concern. It's not, I am not, it's not that you are, you are not a non-motivated, it is something there, but you're just not motivated to do it, but you are disinterested in it. I am not interested in it at all. It is not that I'm interested, but I'm not motivated right now. But I, I have no interest in it whatsoever. That's altruistic. Number five, it is centered, number four, it's centered on the good of another person. If it's compassionate love, it's centered on something that is the good for the other person. What do you want this good for the other person? Number five, it's an enhancement, enrichment, betterment, and improvement of our personal and social well-being. If you have compassionate love, you want somebody else to be treated just as well as you are. You, 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 uh, you want to enhance how they get along. You want to enrich their lives. You want to be involved in the betterment and the improvement of our personal and social well being, yours and their personal well being, without interfering in their lives. Number six, it's compassionate love is a production of the feeling of interconnectedness with others. That you feel like, uh, you know, sometimes you can be away from somebody for a year. And then when you call them, you talk to them, it's just like you just left, you picked up right where you left off. Because you just what? You're connected. And you don't see each other. And you haven't talked to each other in a year, but it's like you just you're connected. Interconnectedness. It produces that. And it's a co compassionate love is a core value. And it's a core belief, value, and tenet of most major religions. All the religions of the world basically have this as a core value. Talk about love. Compassionate love. Number eight. It's available to anybody. Compassionate love is available to anybody who wants to express it. But sometimes because of things that we've gone through, we don't want to show no love. I ain't interested in loving you right now. As a matter of fact, I don't even like you right now. And so it, it, it's, it's available to everyone who wants to express it. But number nine, it also has feelings of mutual respect. I respect you enough. You respect me, mutual respect, and affections. You feel sometimes an affection, mutual affection. If you're not careful and you're not wise and you're not watching, you'll be telling all your business to somebody who you think love you, and you think they love you just as much as, and they're connected to you like you think and you know you're connected to them. But they are not connected to you as much as you are connected to them. I hope you hear where I'm coming from. And you don't know that until it's found out and you're tested. But it's a mutual feeling of respect and affection and some levels of trust after you prove they approved. The next one is to, it's, the closest you can come, the closest you can get to unlimited love, compassionate love, is the closest you can get to unlimited love. Now, unlimited love goes to the point, it's unlimited. The closest you can get to unlimited love, listen to this now, 
without the lover's death. People can love you almost to the point where they kill themselves. Human beings have a way to come close to it. I almost killed myself trying to help them out. They almost killed me. I almost died. All that. But we won't die. But unlimited love walks the gauntlet and goes all the way. And if anybody you know who's alive right now who you talk to, they have not given unlimited love. It's going to stop at the point to where they make sure they're not going to die trying to help you. When you get on a plane, the attendants will tell you to make sure if the oxygen mask drop down, put yours on first. Are you listening? And then work with everybody else. It is my opinion that if you drowning and I can't swim, I do not have unlimited love. And I have known, the news is reported, and I have known people go try to save somebody and they lose their lives trying to save somebody. The only one, hallelujah, who can save you and still live is Jesus himself. Raised from the dead. Because if you die trying to save somebody else, that's the end. And they still may not be saved. But this is compassionate love. It comes, it's the closest you can get to unlimited love. We would like to think that we all have, we, 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 we are like God, that we have unlimited love and we want to impress people with our love. But it's limited, my friend. Uh, compassionate love, turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 78, verse 35 to 39. Psalm 78, verse 35 to 39. This compassionate love. So we talked about compassionate love because it's really important to see that it is empathetic, forgiving, altruistic, centered on the good of others. It's an enhancement. It's a production of feelings of interconnectedness. It's a core value in all of the major religions of the world. They all talk about love. It's available to anyone who wants to express it. And it's the closest you can get to unlimited love. Well, I got love. I love my grown. I don't call them, here's an oxymoron, here's a contradiction. I don't love my grown children. You can't be grown and still be a child. Just to help you to change your perspective, a person is grown in their maturity and responsibility. But if you still see them as a child, then you have not grown. They're not your children. As a matter of fact, once you become born again, they become your brothers and sisters in Christ. Because this kind of flesh and blood cannot inherit this kind of kingdom. So I had to make a choice to stop referring to my 
children when they were children. I knew they were the day would come when they'd be grown. They grown them grown folks. Though. These are some grown folks. They're responsible for their lives, not me. We don't pay their light bill, their phone bill. We don't get them out of trouble. One of the best things you can do is to let them stay in trouble if they're in it. Because after they have suffered a while, <laughs> they'll be established, strengthened, and they'll, be, they'll settle down. But they're going to have their But I don't want them to suffer my baby. You got the problem, lady. You got the problem. Psalm 78 verse 35 says, read, then they, they referring to the offspring of Israel, uh, the offspring or children of it, the Bible calls them children of Israel, God named Israel, Jacob, go on, what? Remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer, Jehovah Elyon, that's the Hebrew name, that's all it means, most high, go on, 30, 36, nevertheless, they're going to flatter God they're going to flatter him how? See, you can flatter God with your actions. You can act like you committed. Or you can talk like you committed. But you're just trying to impress God with something you don't intend to do. So, you flat, they try to flatter him with their what? Mouths. And then on top of that, they what? Lied. Now, you would think that the Bible is saying they lied. But it says, and they lied. And then, get this. They say what? with their tongue <laughs> so apparently you can lie without your tongue you can sign a check you know the money in the bank and you give it to somebody you just lied would you agree and they lied but then it adds with the tongue <laughs> That's interesting to me. Verse, verse 37 read. For what? The reason was what? Their heart was not steadfast. Their heart was not steadfast. But steadfast. But steadfast what? Not with him. They'll hang in there with other folk. But they ain't going to hang in there with him. Read. Nor were they faithful. In his covenant or his agreement or his contract or the con agreement that they have together that they understand that God how God is in their lives verse 38 but he number one being what full of what compassion he was empathetic he has the ability to understand and share the feelings that you have the Bible says the reason God who is objective and absolute impersonal and away from us can be personal he can only be personal through Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, well, who do you all say I am? Through the miracles and signs that I've done and all, who do you say I am? I said, well, you, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Ah, well, flesh and blood, see, didn't reveal that to you. But my Father was in heaven. So it's sympathetic. God is compassionate. It's a compassionate love. And uh, as we look, number two, he says, number two does what? forgave their iniquity. Now iniquity is something you concoct up in your mind. If I regard iniquity where? See if I regard iniquity so iniquity can be something you concoct in your thought, in your, in your behavior. But he says if I regard it where? This iniquity is something you create a plan to steal something. Or better yet Jesus talks about this. He whoever looks at a woman to lust after her this is iniquity. And then he says what? He's already committed adultery where? In his heart. That was iniquity. It was in the heart first. It was iniquity is in the heart first. And then it's in an action. So he says he forgave what? The things that they schemed up in their hearts. Next. And did not destroy them. That's the third thing. He didn't destroy them. Because when somebody come up, come up with a plan against you, and you find out about it, you want to get rid of them. Is that the way you think? And sometimes you don't know what people think until it's exposed. And you find, say, well, is that, that's the way you feel about it? Then you, I, I don't need, and you dis distance yourself. And so he says, and did not destroy them. The fourth thing he says, what? Yes, read, yes, 
many a times he turned his anger away. Now, we are using metaphors about God that we use for people and it is of God the creator of the heavens and the earth is angry. There can be things going on in your life and in bad ways it's turning out so upside down for you until somebody who's spiritual say is your life look like God mad with you. <laughs> you the way with all this mess you got going on it look like God mad with you. Even God is mad with you. That's what's going on. And he tur <laughs> and many times he turned his anger away. The fifth thing he says what? And he did not stir up his what? Now wrath is slow seething intense unexpressed anger. It's slow seething intense unexpressed anger it's what make your blood pressure go up and stay up because if something is working on you on the inside and it's seething and nobody knows you upset nobody knows you got something some extra nobody knows that something you're still holding on for the last 32 years nobody knows you only know and you don't even sometimes you, 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 you cannot even be aware of it Unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, sometimes we overeat. It's called emotional eating. And you do eating and you just eating and eating and you ain't hungry and you just eating. Because it's an emotional support for you. It's something about food that you use to salve the pain and to relieve the pain that you experience. It's called wrath. So you got to turn all that stuff loose. Compassion and love will help you, my friend. Oh, yeah. The sixth thing is in verse 39, read. For he remembered the reason he was full of compassion. Number two, he forgave. Number three, he would not destroy him. Number four, he turned away his anger and he would not stir up his seething wrath. Number six, the sixth thing was th verse 39, what? For he just read what? Remember. There ain't nothing but some flesh. Every time you take a bath, you don't take baths no more. Y'all shower. But when I grew up, you took a bath. You had to run the water in the tub, where there's a big number three ten tub. A bad tub, you run some water in there. You had a bar of soap. We got real modern here lately. In the last 30 years, we got showers. We don't know about, you talk about ring around in the tub. They don't know about that nowadays. Mm -mm. Don't know about these young folks. They don't know about no ring in the tub. And what happens is when you get when you wash your behind, you don't got all the dirt off you, and the oil in your skin through using soap, and then it, it settles on top of the soap, water, and it leaves a whole ring of ski, of of grease, latent dust all the way around the tub. And, it, and you can't just wipe it off because it's gonna smear. You have to get some soap in the rag, and then do what? Wash the ring out the tub just like you washed your body. He said, you ain't nothing but dust. <laughs> dust, D-U-S. <laughs> dust. And get this. And the seventh thing he says, what? Also, you're nothing but a, what? A breath that passes away. And guess what? The reason he can be forgiving, loving, compassionate, and does not destroy, many times turn away. He realizes that a breath, you ain't nothing but a breath that passes, and guess what? And you ain't coming this way, and he won't have to deal with you this way no more. Because you ain't nothing but a breath. Why does he say this? Why can he be so loving toward us and so compassionate toward us? Is because before the foundation of the world, he told Jeremiah, I knew you. Before there was ever a war in heaven. But war in heaven occurred just so that it could prove who was on my side. And a third of y'all, before the foundation of the world, sided with the devil. A third of you all sided with me. And a third of you didn't know who to side with. They're called the atheists, the agnostics, 
and the monotheist. We are monotheists because we believe God, who else, somebody created everything. I ain't seen him, but I believe in him. I, somebody had to create everything. And I like it because then that puts me in the spirit. Well, right there. Right there, I'm in the, in the spirit. Right, right at this moment, once I say, whoever created the heavens and the earth, God is spirit. Call him what you want or name him what you may. You now begin to walk in the spirit and without this kind of faith in the realm of the spirit, it is impossible to please the God who created, whoever it is who created the heavens and the earth. So you connect to him and you're born of the spirit. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. The same word, well, let me, let me, compassion, he says, yeah, 312. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, you got to do something yourself. Put on something. You got to put it on. Let's read Colossians 3, 12, read. Therefore, as the elect, as you've been lego called out, as it, now, it, when, see, for me, I'm older now. And I express it like this because I have to ask myself, well, who in the world is God? Because I'm talking to you about somebody I ain't never seen. We believe on him that he is the rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. So when we say, therefore, I want you to live as if you have been elected by whom? God. Whoever created everything, you want live as though he selected you. And he called you. It makes a difference. Not, therefore, as elect of God, holy, no, no, no. God, when you see the word God appears, you should emphasize that. Beloved, the first thing is what? There are seven of these. He goes and say what? To what? Put on. You see that read? Put on tender mercies. Colossians, am I right? Well, y'all, I ain't reading to y'all. Y'all better read with me. <laughs> That's what he said. What? Put on tender mercies. This word tender mercies in classical Greek, basically we get the word uh, intestines, the bowels. We call it the visceral fat. Uh, the heart, which is visceral organs are the heart, the lung, and the liver. And in classical Greek, they would eat that part during sacrifice. But now... Uh, I would say most people today, they eat visceral food, visceral organ meat, but they don't eat the heart. But they will certainly eat what? Some liver, beef liver, and, uh, and so when you get to the, by the time we get to the New Testament, it's intestines. I have, do I have some chitlins up in here? That's organ meat. That's visceral meat. That's, that's organ meat. Yeah, don't come out. Okay. We, do, we, do, we do that, you know. We do that. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with that. But he says you got to put it on. Put on what? Kindness, what? Humility, meekness, and long suffering. The second thing he says, now, you got to do it. Now, see, yourself. oh, well, God is going to do it for me. I'm so tired of lazy Christians. I, they, so they want the government to take, pay their rent. They want the government to pay for their daycare. They want the government to pay for their lunches. They want the government to pay for their food stamp. They want to the give. They, and who is the government? We are the government. Everybody who is working. You got a job. They're taking tax out the money for you, from you. Somebody, John Hagee says this. If, if the, when the Lord raptures the church, the rest of the world going to have to go get some jobs. Because ain't nobody willing to work. But we're willing to work. For in all what? Labor. There's profit. And we want to profit from labor. Third, verse 13. So you put it on. Then secondly, what? 13 says what? You just got to bear up. You got to bearing one. You got to bear one another. There are some things that you don't want to go along with. But you, you got some things that folks don't want to go along with either. Bam, I don't want to put up with that. Well, somebody's putting up with you, my friend. They just hadn't told you. The third thing is what? Choose and what? Choose and choose and what? Forgiving. Choose to forgive. It's a choice. Now, I used to think that if I hate you 
and I hate you deep enough and long enough and, and intensely enough, I, I'd feel better. But even when you think of it, you're still mad. It don't work. And you're really hurting yourself. Because now you can't move on. To, and sometimes people divorce you and they separate themselves from you, whatever the case may be, and they go on by their business. Have you noticed that when people leave, for them, they enjoy the time. They don't miss nothing back home. But then you count the days. <laughs> yeah. They enjoy themselves. And then they tell you when they get back, you say, well, you've been gone so-and-so-and-so number of days or years. And they say, no, I wasn't. And you got to prove them they were gone as long as they were. Because to them, it was just a little while. You got to bear up with this. And then forgiving one another, read, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must, you must do. You must do this. Now, notice must is in italics in your Bibles. This one of those 23 helping verbs. You are uh, Am is our was word, be, being, being, have, you have forgiven, you have, has, had, do, does, did, you can forgive them, you could forgive them, you shall forgive them, you should forgive them, you may forgive them, you might forgive them, you must forgive them, but either way, work it how you want it, you need to turn it loose. Verse 14, read. But above all these things, you do what? The fourth thing is what? God ain't going to do it for you. You can be a hateful rat all your days. It doesn't matter. God ain't going to care. He, he, he's still God. Do you know, he still, he, he, we had trouble for many years looking at church history because we thought if a pastor had a family and then the children acted crazy and did something stupid, that the pastor had to get out of the ministry. But we have an example right there in the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 where God made man and Adam played the fool. And God is still God. Do you, hear, do you understand? You see how the father shall not bear the guilt or the iniquity of the son? And the son, Ezekiel 18, shall not bear the, what? the guilt and iniquity of the father? So don't let what people do cause you to think it's a reflection of on you if they are adults now if they here we go if they are grown and in your mind they are children it's a reflection on you because you still think they are children but if you can ever turn them loose and start seeing them as what adults then what they do it's no reflection on you. They've been out your house 20, 10, 20, 30 years. And how can what they do be a reflection on you? With false guilt from the devil. That's what he's trying to do. But above all, he says, put on love, which is the bond of what? Perfection as good as it get, the best that it can be. Verse 15, the fifth thing is what? And let... Imagine what it would be if you were to let the what? The peace. Not only but the peace, but the peace who? That let the peace, nothing broken, nothing missing, and nothing lacking. And let it be. If you would just imagine what your life would be like if you would just let your life be as if God gave you peace. And what he gave you, you have nothing broken, ain't nothing missing, and ain't nothing lacking. You can live like that, my friend. A lady said to me yesterday, two days ago, uh, Walter, ma'am, we were talking about something. I called this office and I called, I said, these places, they called the office, this office is closed. This lawyer's office is closed. This thing was closed. I said, they said, this is, a, this, we closed for the holiday. I said, what holiday is this? She said, you the preacher, you ought to know. <laughs> I 
I say, but I have a verse. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. Paul says that I might know him. I hope you get this. He says, not that I have a first uh, 312, 312, not that I have attained already. Got this? I ain't, I ain't got it all yet. Go on. Or I'm already perfected, as good as it gets, the highest quality possible. But I, I do what? Press on. <laughs> Are you listening? That God may do it. No, no, no. Not God, that what? That I, say I. Say I. Uh, you're not strong enough. Say it loud as you can. Say I. That I what? That I may lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus laid on for me. Got it? Lay hold of me. Verse 13. Brethren. Let's read. Brethren. I do not count myself to have already what? Grab hold of this thing. Not totally. But, but one thing. Everybody read. But one thing. Not God. But God gonna do it. Yeah, but he's only going to do it according to the power that you put to work in your life. I do. Here it is. Read. Forgetting those things that sound like forgiveness, don't you? I like that. You say, you forgive it so long that you forget it. You'll use it during testimonies, like all the things we had this, these testimonies today. But we don't live on, we don't live there. We go on. We go back to visit there to make a point to help somebody else. Forgetting those things which are what? Behind. And while I'm forgetting, I'm also what? Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14, I what? Press toward this goal of the prize. And the King James says of the what? High calling. The New King James says the upward call. Somebody called you up on the phone. And what they called you up on the phone was to tell you that Jesus Christ, who you have living in your heart, when you invited him to live in your heart, God was in Christ Jesus. And I told the lady, I said, well, I've been living like I've been raised from the dead. And every day to me is a good Friday. Hey! Every day is Sunday. This is the day. And these are the days. So I forgot. You the preacher, you ought to know what day it is. That's the life he's given us. The peace of God. Back to Colossians, he says, and let the word, then he says what? Number six, be thankful. I'm glad I woke up this morning. I ain't got, I took my, I took three lemons yesterday. I put it on Facebook. I don't hurt nowhere. I'm 73. I'll be 74 this year. I don't hurt nowhere. I don't plan to hurt nowhere. Lemons will get rid of the sugar in your blood. It'll get rid of aches and inflammation in your, in your muscles. Bones don't hurt, muscles do. Nerves hurt. And, uh, and you, you, you can stop hurting. You, you stick with it. Now, don't come in there one day, one day a week think that's going to work. You're eating all them rice, grits, beans, cornbread. you eat all you can. and talking about one lemon going to do it. You heard this phrase, take the bitter with the sweet. We eat all the sweet. Cornbread, put sugar in the cornbread. Who put sugar in cornbread? Y'all, uh, it's a double hit. You may as well make it a cake. <laughs> See, we want a cake. Take the sugar out your food. You already got sugar in, the, in it. Like even, even a cow has milk with sugar in it. Co cow's milk. When I grew up, milk, regular milk was called what? Sweet milk. Why? Because it has sugar in it. The cow got sugar in the cow. Like you can have sugar in your blood. The cow can have sugar in the cow's blood. And the milk is sweet. And then you add sugar to the cornbread, just call it corn cake. <laughs> 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 
sweet bread. <laughs> be thankful. But you want to be thankful that you don't hurt nowhere. Your, your subconscious mind is a habit forming mind. In order for you to uh, some sometime I will, I'm in the kitchen and, I'll, and Karen and I are in the kitchen together and I put a fork down or I put a plate down and I do this over here and when I come back it's in the dishwasher. <laughs> I say, where my plate? I had a plate right here and I had a fork right here. Where is it? I ain't bothered. I ain't got it. I, don't, I, I ain't done it. I said, I know I had a plate right here. What has happened is the habit mind, the subconscious mind, based on habit. You, you learn a habit, and you learn it so well, your con subconscious mind records it. You don't have to learn to walk again every time you get up out of your chair, like you were when you were a child, because it's in your habit mind. So you, you, so you can do things like chew gum and walk at the same time and not think about walking and chew the gum because you learn how to chew gum without swallowing it and you learn how to walk. Now you got two habits going on at the same time. So your habit mind, we, do all, we learn all this one time so we don't have to do it, what? Again. Now, in order for you to train your mind to adopt a new habit, you got to tell your mind what you wanted to do. And therefore, let the weak say, I what? Am strong. I am blessed. Not God bless me, the Lord gonna bless me. No, I am healed. You're training your conscious mind like you learn how to walk, you learn how to talk, chew gum, learn how to eat, learn how to drink water out of sippy cup. You learned all these things and you, you have to train your conscious mind your subconscious mind because 95 percent of your life is controlled by the habitual things you have learned to do over the years and you can almost do it in your sleep and unless you are aware of this you're going to screw up your life now you have to be careful with the subconscious mind train that thing and so you have to let the word of god dwell in you and i was going to say this but Mm. Just, I'm going to throw this out here, Chad. You got a basket, you might catch this. If you don't have a mitten, you might want to let it go by. It might go in the outfield for you. You know, that serpent in the garden. And uh, he came to Eve, said, I had God indeed said. Has God indeed said? And he kept questioning. We don't know how long he did it, but he kept questioning. Has God indeed said? You shall not eat it. No, God knows anything. You, you ain't going to die. You're going to be just like him. And the serpent came to the one. He was more cunning. Deceptive intelligence. You think he's smart. And then Paul said, when I desire to do what? Good. That snake. That serpent. Evil. Is always present. You're in the garden, and the snake is still alive. And nobody can mess your life up. No more than you can yourself. Pastor Baker, when he came years ago, he gave me a book by E.W. Bullinger called Two Natures in the Child of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We know that we have a building not made with hands. And to do good, and evil is always present, that snake is still hanging around. And he talks to you. And you have to make choices. Are you going to go inside with the Lord? That's the test. 
the devil was in heaven and war broke out. He lives in your old nature. And you have to listen. Are you going to listen to that? Or are you going to listen to God? And he's talking to you. And you have to decide. Just like Adam did. Adam just took a chance. He thought he, he and his wife could decide with the devil. Get away with it. Listen to his old ways. And live good and get off the hook. And get by with it. But not if you're going to walk with God. You can't live like this. You can't even think like this. And so Adam, God had, get out of my presence. I know these, these lions, they can't tarry in my presence. And he put them out. They lost everything. But you have to let the word of God dwell where? Richly. Let the word of God dwell in you how richly. But no, not just richly. <laughs> but he says what? With all wisdom. Go back to Ephesians, or Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. In all what? In all wisdom. And make sure you get some teaching with it. And somewhat admonishing with pointing out the things that you miss in one one another in what? In Psalms and hymns and make a song out of it if you have to. And spiritual songs and what? Start singing about it with a whole lot of gracious favor in your heart to the Lord. Number eight. And uh, so you see the number of seven, these seven, you will see these number seven because seven is the number of obstacles. It, it represents obstacles. Obstacles. So those seven things that we just looked at in Colossians and the seven things that we just looked at in Psalm, both of these sevens, when you have seven, you, it's the same thing like you got seven days of the week. You want to start over and the week starts on, say, the week starts on, on Monday. So you got to go Monday, what? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You worked and struggled all the way along, right? Now Monday, what? Is the eighth day. Start all over again. You get the same thing in music. In the, t in the tones, you got what? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, te. Seven of them. You want to start all over again? Do. Got it? You got the same thing in the color spectrum. You got the seven colors. It's the same thing. Roy, G, Biv. R stands for what? Red. O, orange. Y, yellow. G, green. B, B, I, V, and start all over with what? Red. Red. All the, everything is seven. And sometimes when your life goes along, you don't start over until you get to, until, hey, you don't start over until you start over. You cannot start over until you start over. And you got to make up your mind. I'm going to start over because you have been struggling and struggling and struggling for seven days. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Verse 7, 17 says what? And what? And whatever you do. Here's the eighth thing right here. Here's how you start all over again. Because you've been doing it, can be in working out, working at an angle on trying to get everything done. You got all kind of ways and underhanded schemes and tries. You got a whole lot of mess going on. But he says, then here's how you start all over again. Read verse 17. And, and whatever you do, get this now, in word or deed, what? Do all of it how? In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. So that's compassionate love. And you got to start all over, all over again. And it's, it's good to start all over again because in starting over again, you, you, you give yourself a new lease on life. I mean, really. Uh, it's all right to start all over again. Reset. I hear the Spirit. Just reset. You say, well, see, you got some, you've been, some of y'all retired. And you say, well, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to do anything else. And just like a car in a garage, with the dough down and ain't nobody driving it, the tires go flat, the battery go dead, cobwebs get in it, dust collect on it, the car goes down in the, in the house. You better get yourself out of there. Amen. You better get yourself out of there. If you're going to keep going, you better keep going. You better reset yourself. Whatever you do, do it heartily as what? Do it heartily unto the Lord. So that you're compassionate. Reset yourself. Now, here's one. Well, we talked about God. 
That's compassionate love. Very empathetic, so forth, and we've to cover that. It's forgiving and altruistic, but that's the compassionate love of God. Now, just for a few moments, look at God. I'm so tired of people. And many of you, I'm glad I taught you long enough. I hope you got out of it. But look at Micah chapter 7 and verse 18. So we have the compassionate God, I mean the compassionate love, uh, compassionate love, and we have this incomparable God. I mean, incomparable. It's without equal. There's nobody equal to God, whoever created the heavens and the earth. In the same, and it, equal means the same in quality, not in quantity, size, and degree. Whoever created the heavens and the earth, who is like him in size and quantity and degree? Who can create the heavens and the earth and the universe and the galaxy? Who can do all that? Who do you know like that? Hallelujah. And value also is the consideration, the thought, and the regard for something held up as to deserve as important. It's held up, and we hold them up as deserve the importance, significance, worth, and usefulness. So we're going to hold him up because he's equal. There's these without equal. We're going to value his value to us. And then in quality, it's the standard of a thing measured against other things of similar kind. And nothing, it's the quality of it. You don't know you got something real. You don't know you have something that's fake until you put something, what, real next to it. And then the extent of God. His range, his scope, over which something extends. He is everywhere. So with these four words, number one, he's without equal. Number two, his value. Number three, his quality. And the extent, this man is everywhere. Whoever created everything that we know, he is with, there's nothing you can say that's equal to him at all. Not even cancer or death. Divorce or resentment or bitterness. Look at Micah chapter 7 and verse 18. Let's read. Who is the, no, no, let's read with interest. Let's read with uplifted voice. Read. Who is a God like you? <laughs> read, read again. Who is a God like you? Well, now that's the question. What about this God? Because some of y'all have been taught that God puts stuff on you. And he puts stuff in your way. And he sets you up so you will go through certain things so you can learn something. And you ain't done nothing with your innocent self. I don't see it that way. If you read your Bible, read Micah chapter 7 and verse 18. Let's read. Who is a God like you? Number one. He pardons your iniquity. That is, forgives when you miss it. Even in your heart. You got some things you want to do and you know it ain't quite right. Sometimes you can be wanting to do things you don't even know it's wrong until you find out later. But he what? Pardons iniquity. Number one, he forgives you when you miss it. If you're going to serve God and you won't, and he and you say no good thing will he what? Withhold from you. Then how can you believe he put these things on you? Number one, he pardons iniquity or he forgives what? Every area you miss it. That's why in the last 15 or 20 years, I just stopped. I don't talk about sin that much because the sin means to miss them all. I don't plan to miss it. How long are you going to keep on missing it? When you know better, you do better, don't you? And so when you always talk about, I just sin, I just sin, I just sin. I mean, you're the righteousness of God. You're the righteous acts of God in the earth. 
Why are you keep on missing it and always talking about, I just sin, I just sin, I just, I just miss it. He put something in your sin. Well, you ought to stop missing it. Amen. Amen. So he forgives, and even if you do miss it, and this is what I like it, and even if you do miss it, guess what? He forgives it. So he doesn't hold it against you. So get over it. Forgive. It's as if you never, as if you never see it. Okay? Number two, and what? Passing over the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance. In other words, he flies over it. There's a bridge down there and there's an overpass. He flies over it. He goes right over the overpass, right overhead. He sees what you're doing down there. He just goes on over and goes on anyway. God doesn't stop living because you make a mess or make a bad choice, a bad decision. He flies over it. You're going to deal with it, and he's going to help you to get past it. Am I right? So number one, he, number two, he flies over your failures. He flies over your failures. You failed. God didn't. Don't hold him short, but you failed. All right, then he says this, number three, he says what? He does not, what? Retain his anger forever. In other words, I put this right, he, he flee, he frees himself from anger. He frees up. He's freed up. Man, God ain't mad no more. Uh, Jonathan Edwards had a, a sermon that was very popular. It's called Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God. And for, since all the way back to the, Reformate, the uh, Enlightenment period, the, re, the, re, the revival, people have been, been taught that God is mad with you. Oh, God is mad with you. Oh, God, God going to teach you something. God going to put something on you. God going to deal with you. And it's always with some retaliation and vengeance. Because we got a problem with what you did. He flies over, with, over from anger. He frees himself from anger. He does not retain his anger forever because... He what? Delights in mercy. Mercy is to get you through something that you, you deserve to stay in. He'll help you to get, if you want to get out of something, he'll help you to get out of it. Start working on it and he'll help you to get out of it. Use what he gave you and he'll help you to get out of it. Number, verse 19, and he feels your pain. Read, verse 19, what? He will again have what? How does he have compassion? In other words, he feels your pain. Well, not the God of the universe, how can he feel your pain? You can't even see him. But Jesus Christ, his son, he was touched with the feeling of, as a human being, God and a man. And if that man could feel it, and I'm a man, and I can feel it, he can feel it, but God was in him. And guess what? God is in you too. I prove it. He will have what? Compassion on us. Number, the next, and will what? Subdue our iniquities. That's a matter of your heart. And in other words, he fights your enemies. Sister Eloise used to say, he fights your enemies. Your enemies is in your inside. That devil, that serpent, that scorpion, that dragon, that demon, is your old nature. That's why you feel guilty. You, you, some of y'all just can't get over it. I forgot it was Good Friday. Because every day is good to me. Uh, what day is this? Uh, tomorrow is going to be a, a, another Good Friday. <laughs> every day. Every, say every day. Every day is a good day. Um, this is Good Friday. Oh, I can take off. I'm off every day. Off the chain. And subdue your, our iniquities. The sixth thing he says, and, and, you, and you will what? Cast all of our sins into the depth. Everything you think you missed that you're still holding on to that you think the Lord, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Thank God is not only covered by the blood, he's buried it. And don't bring it up no more. It's gone. Now, the enemy will try to remind you of it, but you need to live free like you've been free from it all along. In other words, he flings what you miss. You think you missed it? You think he's holding on to it? He's, he's cast it away. He flings it away. And verse 20, 20 says what? And he does what? And you, uh, he, you, give, you will give what? Truth, that's the, the fact of the truth to Jacob and what? 
mercy, the mercy about forgiveness that you gave to whom Abraham, get this now, in other words, he feeds you facts and forgiveness, and then he says, which you what? Have sworn, which you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. And you start off, that's the eighth one. In other words, he fulfills his promise. Now, these seven things that you're dealing with, you struggle with these things. Forgiveness, pardon, sin, wrath, God's anger. You're always struggling with that. Get over it. He says here, he fulfills his promise, which he swore, you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Now, I want to give you some scripture here. And I'm going to write this down real quick. Here's why I am so convinced that of the, compa the, the compassionate love of God in Christ Jesus. Write these down. Number one, and get them as quick as you can. Galatians 3.26. I'll give these to you quickly. Galatians 3.26. Watch this. Every one of these scriptures, you're going to find God in Christ. And Paul says in Colossians, where is Christ? He is in you. So God lives in your heart. Galatians 3, 26, let's read. Read, everybody. For you are all sons. Not only, you're just not somebody's son or daughter, but you are sons of who? No, 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 y'all got to get some energy here. <laughs> y'all got to help me out. I want you to put some emphasis on God. You are all sons of who? God. God. Come on, get your hands up. No, put your, put your hands, get your hands up. Come on, come on, come on. You're going to do this thing. You're going to make a point. Make a point. Read. For you are all sons of who? Of God. Come on, do it again. You are all sons of God. And emphasize God is strongly. You're not strong enough. Here you go. You are all sons of God. One more time. You are all sons of of God. If you come to this point, you can get over your daddy and your mama, your aunt, your uncle, abuse, rape, incest, and everything else. You can get over it. Just because it happened to you, that's not who you are. You're all sons of God. How? Through faith. And where's God? In Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Romans chapter 6 verse 11 Romans chapter 6 verse 11 let's read likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead you ain't reckon yourself dead you're gonna reckon yourself to be dead go on indeed when it comes to what missing the mark and sin go on but you are alive how are you alive to whom come on let's do it again come on we're going to do it ten times. You alive unto whom? God. I want some energy out, y'all. I mean, I'm, you, you, you get it. Don't worry. It'll come to you. Because you're playing with the spirit of God, who's the creator of the universe. And once you emphasize and talk about him, he will manifest himself to you. Oh, he'll show up and you will feel it. <laughs> I guarantee you, you'll feel it. <laughs> Here we go again. All right, read. Likewise, you also what? Everybody come on. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to what? Sin. But alive, here we go. Unto whom? God. Where is he? In Christ Jesus. Where is he? Who is who? He is our Lord. One more time. Read again. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead to what? Sin and missing the mark. But you what? Alive unto who? God. Where is he? In Christ. Where is Jesus? Who is, who is, who, where is Jesus Christ? In your what? Heart. And he is your Lord. Next one, number three. Philippians chapter three, verse 14. I'm pre that's my echo in here. Tell them to turn it down back there. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. Let's read again. Read. Here again. Okay, read. I, everybody with, with strong emphasis. Let's go. I press toward the... Who is pressing? I press. Go on. Toward the goal 
for the prize of the upward call of who? God. Where? In Christ Jesus. Where is he? In your heart. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Let's read. In everything. Everybody, what is it? In everything. Don't get it twisted. Not for everything. This is not poverty, sickness, disease, sin, or death, or anything other thing shall that come along to se try to separate you from the love of God that he has for you. So he says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, what? In, in all this mess, that, like these testimonies today, in all the things that they went through, what? Read, in everything. Say it again. In everything. Come on, you're not strong. Say what? In everything. See, if you say it, and you say it with emphasis, and you put a gesture with it, you will remember it forever because you got three witnesses. Now I'm going to do it again. Read. In everything, do what? Give thanks. Why? For this is the will of who? Of God. Where is he? In Christ Jesus. And why do you do it? Because it is what? For you. For you is the will of God. Hallelujah. Just go on and say it and go on and be faithful. I'm going to go on. I don't care. And your body will line up. Ephesians number 5. Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Read. Read with uplifted voices. And be kind. To one another. See how you be nice to each other? We ought to be the most loving people. Read. And be what? Kind to one another. Also what? Tender hearted. What? Forgiving one. I ain't gonna hold nothing against you even though I, I, I you, it's some bad circumstances, but you done done something in some bad circumstances too, so just turn the stroke loose. Because you're holding yourself back when you do that. Read. Forgiving what? One another. You're doing this even as what? You experience that. That's why you need to get this so that you can do it for somebody else. Even as who? God. Who did it? God. Who did it? God. Where was he? In Christ. And what did he do in Christ? He forgave you. If God ain't holding under against you, how dare you think you can hold something to something from somebody else? Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. That's number 6. Romans chapter 8. Read. Yet. Raise your voice up again. What? Yet. In all these things. What you been going through lately? What you been going through lately? You think the last two years have been a problem? Look at your life. Look back and see from whence you come. The whole thing has been a whole lot. It's one long saga over the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You've always gone through something. But you can look back and see you have actually come out. Have you come out, my friend? How many times have you come out? Read what he says, what? Yet. Read in all these things. Read. We are more than a conqueror through him who what? Loved us. Go on. Next verse. For I am persuaded. Hallelujah. I am what? I'm persuaded. You got to be convinced. I am persuaded that what? Read. Neither death. That, remember that remember that ultimate that ultimate love compassionate see the devil will try to convince you he's going to kill you you got to convince yourself that I'm going to live I am for what persuaded that neither what death nor what living a victorious life of faith nor what angels or what principalities who are people in public office and government officials 
principal, the head of the school, the head teacher, the principal, nor what? Powers, laws on the books, legislation and things, nor things that are what? Present, going on in the society, in your body, in your mind, nor things as what? To come, next verse, get ready, next verse, 39, what? Next verse, come on. Nor what? Height, nor depth, nor what? Any other what? Everything been created is to create the scatter living daylights out of you. No created thing, created thing, created thing. Cancer is a created thing. Trouble is a created thing. Divorce is a created thing. Worry is a created thing. Read. Shall be able to separate us. Who? Us. Who? Us. Say us. Say us. Hit yourself on the chest and say what? Us. Say us. Us. Say it again. Say us. us. Shall be able to separate what? Us. Get from the love, 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 compassionate love, love. The love of who? God. Which is where? In Christ Jesus. And who is he to you? He's your Lord. Don't let, the devil can't, he can't take you away from God. But he wants to scare you to the point to where he thinks you'll be afraid to think that God won't love you. He can't separate you from the love of God. Number seven, Galatians 3.17. Galatians 3.17. Read. And this I say, that the law, that's the Moses, that y'all divorce people, all y'all divorce Get your broom because God can't use you. You're murderers. God can't use you. God can use a lot of folk. I used to think he couldn't. If you're divorced, he couldn't use you because the bishop, the bishop must be the husband of one wife. So if you've been divorced, you can't be no bishop. It's a bunch of foolish talk. <laughs> read, and this I say, that the law of Moses, read, which was what? Everybody read, 430 years later, after the promise that God made Abraham, go on, cannot cancel or annul what? The covenant that was confirmed before whom? Before whom? God in what? Christ. Well, why did he say Jesus Christ that time? Because in, in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 12, I think that's where it is, or 24, 24, he says, and God said, sit here in my... In other words, how can... How can Jesus be the son of David? And how can David call him Lord? David did it in the spirit. So God, in the spirit, said to himself, having an out-of-body conversation, talking to himself, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And God lives in our heart. We can understand Christ Jesus but it's hard to grasp God all the time. That's why I'm emphasizing it. For this I say that the law which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by whom? God in whom? Christ. Christ is where? In you. Who is he? The hope of the glory of God. It can, that it should not make the promise of God of what? All right. Number eight. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. See, we can't think, we, see, when you're flesh-minded, you can't think God living in you. He lives in your heart. But because we flesh, we, we try to make God in our flesh. That's why we got a white Jesus on the wall on a picture on the frame. We got a white Jesus, an olive colored Jesus, somebody with long hair, blonde hair, hanging on the wall in the house. We think that's Jesus. No, no. He has no semblance of likeness that you would desire him. No beauty that you would desire him. Look at what he says here in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Read. That is whom? God was where? Who was it? Here we go. That what? God was where? In Christ. What was he doing in Christ who lives in you, which is the hope of glory? Where was Christ who lives in you, what was he doing now that Christ is in you? What? Reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing what? Your trespasses to you and has what? Committed to you what? A word about. 
and don't listen to people who tell you that God is holding something against you. Next verse, because of something you did. You might have natural consequences, but it ain't God doing it. Next verse. You might have consequences, but does that do 21? Is that 21? That's 20? We'll go to the next one. 21 says, for he, read, for he made him. Who did? God made Christ. Who what? He knew nothing about what? Sin and missing the mark to be what? Sin for us, read, that it, we, 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 not him, we, might be what? The righteous acts, righteous deeds, and righteous, righteousness of where? God, who? God, of who? God, where? In him. The world sees you. You are God walking in the earth. They're looking at you. 2 Corinthians 2, 12, 19. Two more. Number nine, 2 Corinthians 12, 19. Let's read. Again. Say again. Come on. With interest, let, with interest. Let's go. Again. Do y'all think, come on, come here, come on. Do you think that we excuse ourselves to y'all? See, get this one. I ain't going to excuse myself. Excuse me. Sometimes when preachers get up to preach, they say, excuse me, I'm getting ready to say something. What you going to apologize for? Just go on and say it. It ain't your word anyway. He says what? Again, do we think, do you think we what? I don't get up here and excuse myself for what I'm going to say. It ain't my word anyway. I'm just reading it. Amen? Read. We speak before whom? God. Again, we speak before whom? God. Again, we speak before whom? God. Where is he? In Christ. Where is Christ? In your heart. Who is he? The hope of glory. Read. But we do all things, beloved, for your edification. Last one, 2 Corinthians 2, 17. Read. For we, talking about pastors and ministers, and ministers, all you who preach the gospel and share your faith, read. But we, come on, everybody, for we are not as, get this, as so many do what? Peddling. They peddle the word of God. That means they treat it as for personal profit. They are profiteers for money. They profess faith for personal gain. Like selling illegal drugs or stolen items. For we are not as so many Peddling the word of God. Just peddling the word of God. It ain't working. They're just peddling it. But read. But as of what sincerity? But as from whom? God. Read. We speak. We sp Again, we speak. Re repeat. I mean, we speak. Again, you're not strong enough. We speak. We sp you're not strong enough. We speak. Louder. We speak. We speak. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. Where is he? In Christ. Where is Christ? In you. So when you open your mouth. You ought to have some confidence. Hallelujah. The compassionate love of God in Christ Jesus. He would love us so much that he would take, he found a way to take up residence in our own lives. That's love, my friend, to tell you that God lives where? In you. That's why you want to live good. That's why you want to be great. 
That's why you want to give a lot of money to God. And those 10 pastors that we have serve him. Amen. Please stand to your feet. John. I'm a conqueror, victorious. I am reigning with Jesus. I am seated in heavenly places with him.
God is. And you know where he lives. And you know how he got there in the first place. You stay in faith, amen. I went over again from last week. Y'all remember that? It's time to go. Raise your hands to meet mine. Thank you for the testimonies today. Thank you, thank you for your sharing your faith, your trials and your tests, that the word works. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The compassionate love of God in Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The communion of the Holy Spirit. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest. Oh yeah, that's it. He rests where you let him rest. peace of God. Rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Savior and our Lord. In his name. And everybody say amen. Say the man again. Amen. Say the man again. Amen. Happy Resurrection Day. Thank you for coming. God bless you, and you're dismissed.